Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. New property going live on the website today, guys. This one is the third in a series of Roswell-adjacent properties that we are listing out there in Chavez County in the southeastern portion of New Mexico. This one, as you can see from the headline, is a really good property. It's a pre-staked lot. It's a corner lot. Uh, it actually has fencing along its entire southern boundary and it is very close to utilities, both power as well as uh, underground utilities, uh, meaning internet, phone, cable, so on and so forth. Now, before we get too far into the video, guys, interest of full disclosure so we don't waste anyone's time, this property does sit in a subdivision that has an HOA. That HOA has covenants and restrictions, it has annual dues, and it has a time limit to build. So for the 10% of you who are still watching this video, let me say that we... Here at Hemingway Land, do not like to buy properties in HOAs because you guys don't like to buy properties in HOAs. The exceptions are when those HOAs are not too strict and not too expensive. This property falls into that category. Whatever the case, I just want to say at the outset of this video that this should be understood that it is not necessarily a recreational property. This is not the type of property that you buy to, let's say, park an RV on or to camp on. Uh, nor is it the type of property that you purchase to build, let's say, an unconventional structure like a tiny home. This is a property for someone, a serious home builder who's looking to build a pretty nice SFR, single family residence. Uh, whether it is your first home or a retirement home, you're a snowbird who's moving to the southwest, uh, or you're in the oil and gas industry and you're going to be located in, in the southeastern portion of the state for a while, you figure you'll set up shop, build a pretty nice home. This is the region to do that in, Okay. So with all that said, we'll get back to the HOA a little bit later in the video. For now, let's just get to introing the property. This is reference number CVNM-2637, located, as noted, in Chavez County in the southeastern portion of the state. This property is in the Buena Vida subdivision, and it is a scooch more than six acres, 6.02 to be exact. As you saw up top, this property is priced $18,000 or roughly $3,000 per acre, which... Is not only a good price per acre within this region, but is also a really good price per acre in this given subdivision. Comps, as well, will be talked about later in the video. For now, guys, let's uh, pull this up on a map. As with all of our listings, we've got GPS coordinates down here. Click any one of them, and voila, on Google Maps, the property shall appear. So, as noted, guys, this one sits down here in the southeastern portion of the state, as represented by the pin in the map. If we zoom in on this, you will see... That sits very close to Roswell, the town of Roswell. How close? If we right-click and measure distance, you can see that it is just a scooch, just about 10 miles, roughly, 10 miles west of Roswell, along US-70, a.k.a. US-380. If we zoom in on the map, you'll see that it's the 380, and sometimes it's the 70. You do the math. Whatever the case, guys, this one is, as noted, 10 miles west of Roswell. And do we have photos of the town of Roswell? You bet we do. So, for those of you who are not aware, Roswell is a town of roughly about 50,000 people. Being this close to Roswell means that you are very close to all the major big box stores, as well as pretty much every major fast food restaurant in the, uh, in the country has some kind of footprint uh, out here in Roswell. Point being, you are very close to uh, groceries, to supplies. If you're building a home out here, uh, you're going to be close to the nearest building supply stores, things like that. Additionally, guys, colleges, universities, uh, major medical centers, churches, schools, uh, parks, dining, shopping, and nightlife are all just down the street from uh, your property. should be noted, guys, that when our photographer was out here, he focused a lot on what we'll call local color, meaning the uh, alien history of Roswell, which Roswell tends to focus a lot on. Uh, so there's not a lot of pictures of government buildings here or the aforementioned stores. Suffice to say, they do exist out there. F, Y, I. Now, just very quickly, guys, before I get to the subject property, I just want to point out, not a lot of people realize this about this portion of the state, but there's actually quite a bit to do out here. Uh, sitting really just right outside of Roswell, you have two major things here, the Bitter Lake National Wildlife Refuge just up here and Bottomless Lake State Park. So those are probably both about 20 minutes from the subject property. Additionally, as we travel south down here to Carlsbad, you've got the Carlsbad Caverns roughly about an hour south of the subject property. And if you head east here along the 70, a.k.a. the 380, you will also find yourself uh, entering into Ruidoso, where you'll have access to the Ruidoso Downs Racetrack and Casino, as well as Ski Apache is also in this area. So 
That's on my way of saying that there's a great deal to do out here, more than the average person realizes. Additionally, this giant splotch of green is the Lincoln National Forest, so plenty of great opportunities for hunting out there. Anyway, with all that said, let's talk about property specifics. So, as noted, guys, this property sits just south of Highway 70, just west of Roswell, here in the Buena Vida subdivision. Now, Buena Vida good life in espanol um is this carved out area that you see on the map this is a very large subdivision uh it goes from roughly roswell to juarez not really but you get the point it's large guys okay it's large and it consists of four units of land uh, of course each unit has blocks each block has lots but those four units uh three of them are fairly undeveloped the first unit of land however is unit one that is where this property sits up here closest to the highway now if we go to satellite view you can see that up here you've got a lot of the developed home sites in this region uh, a lot of people really living within close proximity to the subject property as we go south and west and east within this subdivision and again it is quite large you will notice there is nobody living out here in units four three two etc uh that is my way of just highlighting the fact that this is in the developed region uh pretty close up here to the highway and not uh into the rural unsettled middle of nowhere regions that the rest of the subdivision kind of boasts uh additionally if we zoom in on this guys i just want to show you here on map view we don't have the uh plat overlay here on google satellite view so i will just direct your attention back to the photo gallery where we have not only our handy google earth overlay to give you a sense of the footprint of the land uh, but we also have the plat map out here this is not the world's most detailed plat map i will caution you uh, but it does give you a sense and by the way we had to turn it on its side because it's written sideways uh, this is where the property is located right here and of course this is the entrance of the subdivision up here so really you're fairly close the major the main road the main arterial that crosses through here is tierra grande this property sits just right off tierra grande anywho with that said guys let me go to some property specific photos here on the page first off this is the entrance to the subdivision right here so as you can see pretty nice community at the outset they've got a formal entrance uh, over here some photos of this as well as the underground cable that exists in the region fiber optic cable that's our way of saying that there are underground utilities in this region you'll see more of that in a bit community mailboxes right as you drive through the entrance there's community basketball court i'm told there's also a tennis court here i'm not sure why we don't have pictures of it but point is there's a bit of a recreation area out here that's the kind of thing that you find with hoas is that they've developed the region in some fashion uh they collect annual dues they have to spend it on something and things like this are always a nice feature to have another nice feature to have segue is a fire station servicing the subdivision itself this is the fire station servicing the buena vida community so if anything goes pear-shaped on the lot of course the firemen are none too far away really just a few blocks so that's always a nice kind of peace of mind thing to have now as we go through the photos here guys i want to show you these are what some of the developed home sites look like out here and i'm showing you this for two reasons number one to illustrate the fact that there's some pretty nice homes out here um, as noted, this is a six acre property. Really all the lots in this region are generously portioned ranchettes, five acres, six acres, things like that. You don't find anything that's really much, much less than five acres. Point being, uh, on these lots, uh, comes a lot of privacy and you've got people who pay for that sort of thing and they pay to build some nice houses out there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, of course, the HOA has a kind of architectural control committee that at the very least approves the building plans of everything that gets built out here i have seen architectural control committees and other subdivisions that choose your paint swatches for you this is not that this is not that and one of the other reasons why we're showing you all these developed home sites within this region is to give you a sense that there is there's no real aesthetic uniformity between these things i mean the fact that this one looks like it's you know a scooch more than two stories the point is that there's no limitations on on you know building size as far as height as far as style you're seeing all different kinds of styles of houses out here but the, the commonality between them all is that they're all pretty nice okay so this is just my way of illustrating both the quality of the homes out here and the fact that the architectural control committee quote unquote is not too strict about you know exactly what you're building as long as it's a nice respectable single family residence and you know there are those of you who blanch at this idea uh but this is always a this is always a benefit to you the uh to you the homeowner to you the the person who's buying land out here because it ensures your property values for years to come 
uh, it ensures that property values will maintain or steadily increase with time as opposed to uh, being diminished by people who build kind of garbagey looking things on their land. Anyway, pausing on the fire hydrant here just to show you that there are fire hydrants in the area. Some community water lines, I will caution you, however, don't mistake that for meaning that there are water lines you can hook up to on the property. This is the type of property in which you're going to be drilling a well, okay? Uh, underground utilities, these are none too far from the subject property. The underground utilities in this photo, as well as the power lines in this photo, are both roughly about a thousand feet away, a thousand feet north of the subject property. And if we pull this back up on the map, you can see the developed home site sitting right here and right here along Tierra Grande Boulevard. This is where you will find those, um, those utilities. You know, the underground utilities are labeled as being along Mystico Lane, which is right over here. I'm sure they are also over here. Uh, additionally, you can kind of see the power lines that are servicing this home site. Uh, everything really just stops uh, just short of this property, about a thousand feet short of this property. Uh, additionally, as you can kind of tell from the roads out here, these are paved. The main drag here, Tierra Grande, is paved. Uh, this road, which just leads down to the property via Del Sol Street, this one is not paved, but it's a pretty well-maintained dirt gravel road, and my suspicion is as land gets purchased out here and homes get built, you're going to see this road get developed more. Back to the photos, guys. Speaking of roads, in the very next photo, we have a picture of those roads. Uh, you know, my photographer assured me that this is really navigable and accessible by any vehicle type. Uh, of course, my photographer drives something akin to what the U.S. military used in Fallujah. So, grain of salt, but overall, it does look like a fairly navigable road. Also, it's none too far from the paved road. So, getting within a thousand feet of this property is fairly easy to do. And then this might just, you know, you might want to take a larger truck out there if that's the case. Anyway, uh, this is the property. Uh, one thing that I want to highlight to you guys. So you've got the fencing here along the southern boundary. Let me go back to this. So you've got the fencing here along the southern boundary. You can see a little bit on the map. I'll show you more in the photos. One thing that I want to demonstrate, you've got road access here along the entire, um, we'll call this the western boundary of the property. The northern boundary of the property also has a legal road right here. Now you can't really make it out in satellite view. In person, it's not very well defined, so you're not going to see it too well in the photos either. But, for instance, if I break from the photos just a bit here, come back up to the plat, you will see that here along the northern boundary of the property, there is uh, a legal road right here. So legal road on the northern boundary, legal road on the western boundary. And then along the southern boundary is fencing. Uh, and you will be glad to know that with that fencing, of course, uh, you've also got, ba-boom, property boundary markers out there. So... This is pretty obvious where your property is going to start and end at. The, the, the less defined corner of this lot is the northeastern corner. That being said, this is the property boundary marker that stakes out the northeastern corner. This is all my way of saying that you're not going to have to spend a lot of money on getting a survey done if you do choose to buy this property because so much of this is dictated for you in advance as exactly where this property begins and ends. Okay. Anyway, as we go through the photos, you will see more of the land here. My photographer got about a bajillion photos that are all largely interchangeable. Uh, it's a nice flat piece of property, a lot of wide open blue sky out there, uh, easy to build on, easy to park on, uh, so on and so forth. So not a lot of um, not a lot of landscaping or excavation is going to have to go into this. Uh, as far as, you know, when you start building a home site, you're not going to have to flatten out a hill or something like that. Anyway, guys, I will let you peruse the rest of the photos on your own time. As I said, there's a lot of visual redundancy here, but I will direct your attention as always to the end of the gallery where we have the overhead drone shots, which again will give you a sense of the size, shape, location, general footprint of the land. One thing I just want to point out, here is one of the best photos where you can see this southern boundary outlined with the, uh, with the fencing that exists out here. Looks like someone's got the lot next to you and they're beginning to develop it in some fashion, uh, but that fencing is, is step one. Additionally, from this, you can also see exactly how close far the neighbor uh, over here is and exactly how far you are from those utilities uh, and perhaps the degree of difficulty in getting them extended out to the property. Uh, of course, we will have more photos here in the gallery of the property outlines. In addition, we've got a drone video that will be added down here at the bottom of the page just to give you guys a better sense of the property, the terrain, and the surroundings. Now, let's talk about that HOA, guys. Up here at the top of the listing page, we've got a lot of bullet points, property-specific notes. These deal with the HOA. So first off, the Buena Vida Improvement Association is the name of that organization. Their annual dues are $75. $75 is not bad. I've seen ones that run $500, $700 annually. So this is very reasonable. Uh, that $75 is used for, uh, you know, road maintenance, I'm sure, is one of those things, as well as probably 
uh, just outfitting the community with things like, you know, basketball court, tennis court, things like that. Uh, I'm sure they probably also have some plans for more development in the future, particularly as the community builds out. Anyway, to learn more about them, of course, we've got their website linked right here. That will take you to this website. Uh, this is the homepage. There we go. The homepage, uh, you know, whenever you run into one of these HOAs that actually bothers to have a website where you can contact people, that's always a good sign that says that they're active within the community. They don't make it difficult to figure out what the covenants and the restrictions and the bylaws are. All that information, of course, is posted on that page. Additionally, guys, that information is also posted on our page right here. Uh, we have the Buena Vida covenants and restrictions, which you can read right here. Now, let me talk about these for just a little bit. So these covenants and restrictions are what I like to term uh, common sense, good neighbor restrictions. Okay. These are not too strict. These are the kind of restrictions that are basically like, don't be a jerk. That's what the restrictions are. Okay. Specifically, if we look at say bullet points four, six, and nine in this, uh, utilities, buildings, and pens or other improvements shall not be constructed so as to interfere with utility easements or roadways. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That's logical. Point number six, uh, this one, like private power generation will be acceptable as long as its sight, sound, and emissions are not offensive to the surrounding residents. Okay, that seems easy to abide by. And point number nine basically is just how you dispose of garbage and trash and refuse. Don't burn it on the property. Don't be a jerk and smell up the community, okay? So those are all pretty easy to abide by. Uh, some of the other covenants in here have to do with things like um, livestock, let's say. Point number two has to do with that. If you have more than five acres, which again, this property is, uh, you can keep horses, cattle, chickens, and other fowl. Other fowl. I don't know what that means. Quail, geese, I don't know. But you can keep them on the property is the point. So you can raise some livestock out there. Uh, additionally, point number three has to do with minimum square footage. We mentioned earlier in the video, tiny homes would not be acceptable out here. 1,400 square feet is the minimum for the property, for the, the home site that you're going to build on the property, the primary domicile, if you will. So that's always good to know. And then as you go through these, you'll see there's just a lot of, as I mentioned earlier, just obvious good neighbor stuff, common sense, logical. When you get down here to point 11, let's talk about this one. So this is the Architectural Control Committee. As I remarked earlier, I've seen ones that are a lot stricter than this, ones that have to do where they're picking out the paint swatches for you. My take on these is always that these things are written into the covenants and restrictions of an entity like this simply to keep the riffraff out, simply to maintain property values and make sure that somebody doesn't show up and park a bus on the land for two years and do who knows what. This is the kind of thing that's established just to, just to make sure that they can you know, maintain a peaceful you know, beautiful area, let's say. And our conversations with the HOA lead me to believe that they're fairly laid back. This is the kind of thing, if you're looking at this property seriously, contact them, reach out to them in advance. You know, these are rules that are in theory. Let's talk to them about practically speaking, uh, you know, what can I do? What can I build? They sign off on all the building plans out there. Uh, but m my guess is, you know, again, my guess is they're pretty easy to deal with. We'll keep it at that. Anyway, uh, whatever the case, here in the covenants, one thing I want to point out to you, because we called them for clarification on this, uh, while erecting a permanent residence, permission by the committee may be granted to use a temporary living facility such as a trailer, motor home, etc. Use of such a temporary living facility shall not exceed a period of six months. Now, that sounds to me like you have a, a building time limit of six months, which seems really tight, a really tight schedule if you're going to build a whole house. So we reached out to them and we asked, what is, you know, what are the rules about that? And they said, no, it's it's really 12 months. Let me read you the exact quote here. Uh, once you start construction, the HOA can give you two additional six months extensions. So you will have 18 months total to complete the building. Really, this thing is in the covenants just to prevent people from living indiscriminately out of an RV for extended periods of time. That is specifically what that is for. But the point is, you've got six months to start, easy extensions up to about 18 months, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, guys? Anyway, so point being, if you do have further questions about this, this is my take on it, uh, but reaching out to the community, reaching out to the HOA, talking to them, uh, always an excellent idea, particularly if you do plan to drop $18,000 on a piece of property where you're then going to build a who knows how much, uh, how much the house is going to cost to build, okay? Anyway, uh, additionally, guys, just want to point out to you, Excel Energy is the power company that services this region. CenturyLink provides cable and internet services. Again, uh, you know, reaching out to these organizations in advance to ask them, say, hey, I'm buying some land. It's out in Buena Vida. You got power lines roughly about 1,000 feet from my property. How many more power poles is it going to take to get that extended? What's that going to cost me? 
so on and so forth. Always good to ask those questions about cost and logistics. My guess, however, is that if you're going to build a home out here, if you squirreled away $100,000 or $150,000 to do that or more, this probably is a minor expense to you. But we always like to alert our buyers to that. Uh, additionally, guys, as mentioned earlier, this is an area in which all the homes that you see out here on the map are being serviced by wells. They all have their own wells. So this is a region where, number one, the water table is fairly accessible, as you can tell. Uh, enough home sites out here. Uh, additionally, it's one where you're going to have to get permitted for the well. Uh, so that's going to be through the office of the New Mexico State Engineer. Now, of course, we've got their website linked right here. We've got all three of these websites actually linked right here to help you better with that research. Uh, office of the uh, State Engineer, of course, is the entity in New Mexico that governs the uh, permitting of all wells within the state as well as water rights. So this is going to be an organization you'll have to go through to get permitted to drill a well out there. These websites, the Colorado one's better than the New Mexico one, but these websites are usually pretty informative about the water table depth of other wells within that region. Uh, I think, you know, this southeastern portion of the state is a fairly fertile place. They've got a lot of rivers going through there. So I don't think water table depth is necessarily a problem out here. And for the record, guys, we have more information about all of that down here. Uh, in this region of the page, county contact information includes not only the uh, utility companies that I just mentioned, but also the state engineer. And you can see what a permit application looks like if you click this link and some well drilling info that we supply for our buyers as well. Uh, finally, guys, do want to mention uh, one final thing, which is that, well, two final things. Number one is this is an area that actually uh, your neighbors in this region, a lot of pronghorn and a lot of antelope tend to roam through here. As noted earlier, it's a massive subdivision. It goes from up here at the 70 to way down here. So there's still a lot of rural, undeveloped land. Uh, my photographer said he saw some pronghorn and some antelope out there. We didn't get any pictures of them, but they are also noted on the Buena Vida page here. They talk specifically about neighbors in the region somewhere in here. Yes, pronghorn and antelope in the fields, blah, blah, blah. So, of course, this is not necessarily a region where you can hunt, but you've got some critters in your backyard every day so you can feed the antelope, I guess. Anyway, uh, with all that said, guys, let's just talk about comps. One last thing here about comps. 18,000 for six acres in this region is really good. There are websites that focus specifically, like Buena Vida has one, where they focus on land for sale within that region, and they have properties for sale. The least expensive one started about $25,000, and I'm not going to show the website necessarily right here on the video, but uh, they're not hard to find. If you just Google Buena Vida land for sale, uh, you'll find some comps out there. Again, everything really starts at 25 and goes up from there, 30,000, 35,000, not uncommon to see. So 18,000 for a six acre piece of land is actually a really good bargain for this region. Anyway, guys, if you are interested in purchasing this property, you should know that we closed on this with landmark title, which means we do have title insurance on the land, which means we will be providing you with a warranty deed. Come up here, click the buy now button. It'll take you to the secure checkout page where we ask for a 500 non-refundable people. Once again, non-refundable. Earnest money deposit of $500. When we get into this price range, this $18,000 price range, we anticipate a smart, savvy buyer is going to want to close through a title company. And even if you don't, we're going to encourage you to, okay, for a variety of reasons. Whatever the case, the 500 kicks the process off. You give us the information, legal name for deed, email, phone, tax address, et cetera, et cetera. Agree to the terms of service. Click next, and on the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to put down that $500 deposit. Now, we got a page on our website, guys. If you come up here, how it works, buying from us, you click on this, it's going to walk you through the different ways that we can close on this property. Again, we recommend title and escrow for everything in this price range, but the way that that process works, you put down the $500, within 24 hours, we're going to get you a sale purchase agreement, you sign it, we sign it, we submit it to the title company, and they do the rest. And if you want to see an example of what one of our contracts looks like, click this link right here. It's a very simple one-page contract, one page for signatures. It's not really the kind of thing that requires a lot of scrutiny. It's all fairly you know, self-explanatory. But if you've got a lawyer friend, you want them to look it over, please do. Be our guest. Not a problem. Um, if, by the way, you are not familiar with what title and escrow is, or if I went through this all too fast, if you want to learn the benefits of something like that for you, the buyer, we've got a new page on our website. It's title escrow frequently asked questions. If you click on this link right here, or even if you navigate to it from our, our how it works title escrow FAQ, it'll bring up this page where we answer pretty much all the common questions that we get from buyers all the time. Like what does a title company do? Questions as kind of elementary as that to, you know, how can I fund this transaction, the various ways I can fund it, 
Uh, you know, what benefits do they provide? Uh, what is the difference between the research a title company does versus the research Hemingway Land does? So on and so forth. So I'd encourage you guys, if you're not familiar with the process, but you're looking at this property or any one of our properties seriously uh, that's in a similar price range, give this page a read. It'll walk you through a lot of that process. Anyway, with all that said, guys, uh, that is the new property, Roswell adjacent, six acres out there just west of town. Uh, I really like this one, despite the HOAs, the covenants, the restrictions, the annual dues. That's the kind of thing we normally avoid. But as I said, this appears to me, uh, all evidence suggests this is a pretty agreeable HOA to deal with, uh, pretty inexpensive HOA. And you get a lot for what you're paying for, particularly being this close to a major town like Roswell. Anyway, guys, hope you agree. Hope you uh, like the property as well. And we will see you in the next video.